In this question, we are considering a uniform electric field surrounding the origin and its direction is given to us to be along x-axis. We are considering here four points A, B, C and D whose coordinates are also given to us. With this information, we need to find the point at which the potential, the electric potential happens to be minimum. All right. In order to answer this question, you need to remember the fact that electric field happens to be along the direction in which the electric potential decreases at a highest rate. So, you know that potential at C is greater than potential at A because this happens to be the direction of electric field. Moreover, if you look at what is potential at B and potential at D, we can understand the relation between them by using the equation dv equals minus e dot dr. What is dv? The potential difference between any two positions considered. dr is a vector along the line joining those two points. Vector e happens to be the electric field that you are looking at. Now, for points b and d, Let's say you go from D to B. In that case, DR is along DB. Do you see that theta, which is the angle between vector E, the electric field applied, and the path that you are choosing happens to be 90 degree? So theta here is 90 degree for this path, which gives DV which is minus E D R cos of 90 degree to be 0. So what do we have? We can conclude that V at B and V at D happen to be the same. Moreover, we have concluded that VC is greater than VA. With all this information, let's look at the options once again. We know for a fact that VC is the highest VA is the least, VB and VD are equal and in magnitude in between VC and VA. So, the correct option happens to be A. Let me help you with the date of the question. We are considering here a 2 micro coulomb charge which is carried from point A to point B. And the amount of work done by the electric field in this case happens to be 50 micro joule. Now, what do we need to find? The potential difference between point A and point B, also the point which is at higher electric potential. Well, before going ahead, let me remind you of a fact. Electric field happens to be along the direction in which the electric potential decreases at the highest rate. Remember that. It will come in handy. Here is the setup. These are two positions A and B. This is a positive charge we are considering. And on a positive charge Q, if you look at the force because of the electric field, it happens to be along the direction of the electric field itself. So, if work done in this case happens to be a positive value, it can only be in that Either the force due to electric field is along the direction of displacement or makes an acute angle with the displacement. Which further means that since force and electric field happen to be in the same direction, either electric field is along the direction of displacement or it makes an acute angle with the displacement direction. What does that mean? The potential, the electric potential at point A is greater than the electric potential at point B. VA is greater than VB. Now that we have figured out the first part of the question, let's look at the other. The potential difference between point A and point B. How do you do that? This equation which connects the work done by the electric force, the charge 
and the potential difference comes to our help. We need to find Va minus Vb, which is work done by electric force divided by the charge. What is work done? 50 microjoule. And the charge is 2 microcoulomb. Simplify this and you get 25 volt as your answer. So, what's the potential difference? 25 volt. And which point is at a higher electric potential? It is point A. So, look at the options once again. Which one is correct? It's obviously B. Let me help you in interpreting the data from the question. There is a charge plus Q fixed at each of these points, which are those x0, 3x0, 5x0 up to infinity. And there is a charge minus Q fixed at each of these points as well, which are those 2x0, 4x0, 6x0 up to infinity. All right, there are infinite number of charges. x0 here is a positive constant. And with this information, find the potential at the origin due to the system of charges. That's the question. And here are the options. Well, before proceeding with this calculation, let me ask you, if at all I keep a charge here, at a distance d away from it, let's say at point P, how do you find the electric potential because of this charge? You take V at P to be Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught d. This is a scalar quantity, right? Now, let's say we consider the x-axis like this and let's visualize the placement of charges on the x-axis with the given data. Here is the origin. Let's say this is at a distance x naught this point at a distance 2x0, this one at 3x0, here at 4x0, this one at 5x0, 6x0 and so on. Where are the positive charges? They are at x0, 3x0, 5x0 and so on. Where are the negative charges? They are at 2x0, 4x0, 6x0 and so on. So, all you need to do is take the sum of electric potential due to positive charges and negative charges at the origin. That's all. That's all you need to do. But first, let us consider a net electric potential at the origin because of the positive charges alone. What will it be? Well, I can take Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught out in common. In the bracket, you will have 1 by x0 plus 1 by 3 x0 plus 1 by 5 x0 and so on. And the net electric potential because of the negative charges will be Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught taken out in common. And in the bracket you have minus 1 by 2 x0 minus 1 by 4 x0 minus 1 by 6 x0 and so on. There are infinite number of terms in each of these equations. What do you need to do to find the net electric potential at the origin because of this configuration of charges? Simple. Add these two equations. You will get your answer. So V net, the net electric potential at the origin happens to be V1 plus V2. Let's add them. We can take Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught x naught out in common. So this is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught x naught out in common. Let's be careful. In the bracket you have 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 6 so on. And there are infinite number of terms like this. Do you see this pattern? Does it look similar to something that you have studied? Well, if you remember, natural logarithm of 1 plus x can be written as x minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 minus x to the power 4 by 4 and so on till infinity. What if I take x is equal to 1? 
that will give us natural logarithm of 2 and it will be 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 6 and so on. So, do you see that this is actually giving you natural logarithm of 2? Exactly why? Your final result for the net electric potential at origin turns out to be Q into natural logarithm of 2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught x naught. That's your final answer. Now, look at the options. Obviously, the correct option is D. Look at this interesting question. We are considering ABC, an equilateral triangle of side length 2 meter. Electric field with magnitude 10 Newton per coulomb is as shown in this direction. We need to find the potential difference VA minus VB. All right. What comes to our help is the fact that electric potential decreases at the highest rate if you go along the direction of the electric field. And in this case, the electric field happens to be in this direction. So if you go from B to C, for sure the electric potential will decrease at a highest rate, which also means that V B happens to be greater than V C. Moreover, if you draw a perpendicular line like this to the electric field, this represents an equipotential line. What does it mean? Electric potential at all the points on this line happen to be the same in magnitude. So if you take a point here, let's say D, you know that VD must be equal to VA. So in conclusion, we know that VB is greater than VD, which is greater than VC. What do we need? We need to find VA minus VB. If at all I find VB minus VD, it is as good as VB and VA difference, right? But remember, VA minus VB is not equal to VB minus VA. Be careful. All right. Here is electric field in magnitude. These are the points we are considering. This is the point D and VA and VD are equal in magnitude. Let's proceed. What comes to our help in finding the difference in the potential when you are given the electric field magnitude and the distance between the two points? It is this equation which connects potential difference and electric field and the displacement. We know for sure that VB happens to be greater than VA. So, from this equation, we can write VB minus VA equals E into D, where D is the distance between point B and point D. All right. So, we need VB minus VA, which is also equal to VB minus VD. And that will give us capital E into D, which is 10 Newton per coulomb into 1 meter. So, VB minus VA turns out to be 10 volt. But what do we need? VB minus VA or VA minus VB? It is VA minus VB and obviously this turns out to be minus 10 volt. So, with our deductions, let's look at the options. The correct one happens to be B. Next, we have a simple and straightforward question. What we are given here is the information on the potential of an electric field. Its dependence on x and y coordinates is given as 10A xy. With this information, we need to find the electric field strength in the vector form. Here is the equation. Do you see that there are two independent variables here, x and y, and there is one dependent variable, capital V, the electric potential. With this, how do you find the electric field strength in vector form? You will take this equation. 
you may ask what is this term this one and this one here simple let me explain this term represents the differentiation of v the electric potential with respect to x alone it is also called partial differentiation of v with respect to x what does it mean we are interested in finding the variation of v with respect to x so all you need to do is while finding this term treat the other things as constant and differentiate the given function in terms of x alone do the same thing with respect to y for this term with respect to z for this term all right so e can be written as minus of partial differentiation of v with respect to x will give us 10 a y here is i cap plus let me write these terms first now what's the partial differentiation of v with respect to y remember treat the others as constants it will give us 10 a x is there a dependence on z here no so the entire thing is as good as a constant for the third term's case so this will turn out to be zero and that's why vector e the electric field strength in vector form can be written as minus 10 a drawn out in common into y i cap plus x j cap that's your final answer looking at the options we see that the correct one happens to be b